With the right friends, any game can really be a good time. Realistically, it's the experience of bonding and laughing that truly makes a good time. Which is why a lot of party games get their status by emphasizing the fun of a good night with friends. However, getting the right friends is really hard sometimes. Screw Thy Neighbor is possibly a fantastic icebreaker for getting to know these brand new friends that you are trying to break that barrier with. What better way to know somebody without getting a little uncomfortable? Screw Thy Neighbor is a three plus party game playing best around five or six. This game plays in about 30 minutes. To keep it simple, dealer deals cards to everybody. Everyone then takes turns trading with the player to the left. I'll touch up on that a little later. Whoever has the lowest card after the trading phase is the screwed. And whoever made them get the lowest card is the screwer. And guess what? You're both now in a competition. Head to head, who's gonna win? Well, that's based off the judges and the HOA. They're all gonna get together and decide who wins the card between the two, the screwed and the screwer. It has a very adult theme and definitely categorizes this for game night of adults with thick skin. So, let's see it. Screw Thy Neighbor is the party game I'm literally talking about. So, I split this up into different decks here. Uh, this is actually a combination of these two decks, but they're drinking aspects of the game. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave those out. We're gonna go straight into the basics of the real game. Um, you start the game off by giving everybody one card from here. And these cards vary from like being a loser, from having the highest card, basic numbers, um, and then the punch card, which I'm assuming is a, is a wild card. It could be anything you want it to be. So everyone gets a card dealt out to them. And, you know, you're not trying to reveal them right away, but you could actually do a trade if you want, right? This person's obviously not going to trade. They have the best card. They both have loser cards. They want to get rid of their cards. He has the the flipping bird card, which is the highest card. Um, so this player's like, you know, looking to the person on the right, hey, I want to trade with you. So the trade happens, unless you have the flipping the bird card, but he didn't. He had the fist, which could have been anything. So I guess, yeah, I guess, oh, I have the flipping the bird card. Gotcha. It's a wild, so he can't trade. Okay, not a big deal. And then he tries the same thing and gets blocked by this card. So, they both have the lowest card here. This is a really bad example. Would you look at that? Player four miraculously was lying this whole time and has a three. So this player has the lowest card, but since this player and this player were trying to do a trade, he kind of screwed him. So this is the screwer, this is the screwed. So what happens next? The screwer chooses what they want the screwed to compete in. Whether it's yeah, kind of like a truth or dare kind of thing, right? The player's like, okay, share. Share some information with us. And it reads here. If you were stranded on an island with no food and had to or... Oh. With no food and had to eat someone, in what order would you eat them? Explain your menu for the week. Really awful. So, Okay. What would you do, loser? Loser's like, um, I would eat them from top to bottom. Very basic. This person's like, well, I'd obviously, you know, so that's the screwers. So now the screwed gets to go. Or this is the screwed that just went, right? From top to bottom. Very basic. The screwer gets to go now. Oh, the screwer's like, mm, well, I like to eat thighs and arms first because that's probably the tastiest. And then throughout the week, go for nastier parts of the body. I have no idea. Anyways, it comes to a vote. All right, HOA, what do you think? Well, his is a lot better because he actually put some effort into it. So he wins this card. Now, reasons of restraint. I mean, that's the game. You just keep doing that, rotating the, the dealer and then showcasing all the cards and seeing who has the lowest card, right? And then the screwer and the screwed have to compete. Reasons of restraint is actually like kind of um, more like a dare. Like you are the captain of the local branch of the PC police tell everyone what you think of this game and the people playing it so now you have to like kind of like I guess that's still storytelling but some of them are like would be like accents and such right and you just do this 
whoever has the, the most challenge cards at the end of the game wins. And I think you set your own like boundaries of when you want the game to end. Now there's three actually versions to this. And I think that's what kind of separates us from other party games, I'm assuming. And you have, you know, the WMPDM rules. I think it's, this is like a socializing game. So you're not competing too hard. Then you have the, the cutthroat rules, which is what I was doing. We were actually getting points for it. Then you have the drinking rules. Uh, for the drinking cards that you want to incorporate. But, I mean, as you can tell, it's a very straightforward game. My likes and don't likes. Well, for one, at this point, I'm assuming everybody has played a judge-style party game. Uh, wait, you haven't? How's everyone doing today? Today, we're going to be going over Cards Against Humanity. So, at this point, I assume the game is accessible and easy to teach. I like that anybody can be a victim of being in the challenge. Even if you have the lowest card, the person that gave it to you is probably in that game. And how I play it, and how uh, I assume was the correct way after I asked, even the dealer could be the screwer, which is pretty interesting. Because no one's really safe from being in that competition. The, the game comes with different variations, whether you want to play casually or competitively, or if you just want to drink. Now on the other side of likes is obviously dislikes. And I'll tell you right now... Uh, Accents are pretty niche. Not everyone can do an accent, and I think a lot of the times that throws people off or away from wanting to play a game. Uh, even if it is a great game and possibly going to be a good time, for some reason, people who just don't know how to do anything else with their voice, they shy off and know they're not going to win. And this is a little more personal here. I'm not a big fan of calling people for fanities, and this game kind of asks you to call somebody a card person. A card word don't want to say it and you know what I think it's just a little harsh and maybe that's just me maybe that's where I'm from maybe some people are okay with that but during our gameplay we definitely leave the name of the loser out of our game final thoughts it's another take of the judge style party game two challenges compete two ja two challengers compete in a challenge and players vote on who wins that challenge Challenges vary between truth or dare expansions. I think that the crude humor and I think the direction they go with crude humor and the way the game looks is is cool, but sometimes I think they went a little overboard. Um, if this sounds like something you're interested in, maybe you've never seen it before, maybe you don't like it, maybe you just want to leave a comment and say hello, let me know.